process before this is an extraction process that takes place at the hospital. So that goes through, um, we take the sample and then it is what they call extracted in order for us to be able to obtain the viral RNA out of the sample. So once we receive that uh, small sample, we actually transport that back here because it's now non-infectious. And so once it gets to Helix, the analyst takes the samples and we go into a room which is called pre-PCR, which means it's basically before the PCR process actually is going to happen in another room. There's a preparation stage that takes place using reagents, buffers, mixtures, what they call primers and probes to prepare the sample for the PCR reaction that takes place in this room. The extraction process, because of the volume of, volumes of sample, can take anywhere between an hour and up to four hours, and if we have maybe a hundred samples to do, can take a little longer because we do the extractions manually, meaning by hand, we use pipettes to actually extract, um, you know, prepare the sample and uh, to be able to get the DNA. So from there, once it gets to Helix, um, the preparatory stage can take maybe about 30 minutes or so. And once the plate is ready to be put on for amplification, that's about a 90 minute run. So after the amplification stage takes place within the instrument, then the analyst uh, interprets the information and that information and the data go off to a virologist uh, PAHO and then they look at the data as well, which they have the same software. So they reanalyze the data to be able to make an inter interpretation um, and assist us with that. As of today, we have tested 1,049 samples to date and they are still um, actively coming today, which we will probably get maybe another 75 to 100 samples. It's really um, an, a, a great feeling for not only the team, but for Bermuda and collectively Department of Health, who, you know, we're all in this together and, and we're all a team. It's a team effort. Um, but getting uh, testing online and pioneering testing has been a really great feat. And we've been testing since March 11th. And so it started off um, smaller sample size and then quite ramped up when everyone uh, was comfortable with the process and then we knew exactly where Bermuda was going. So Department of Health have done a fantastic job of strategizing through the whole um, COVID testing uh, status um, and assisting us as well here. We have been listed on, um, I think it's on the, on the news um, in the region that Bermuda is the highest tester in the Caribbean. So that has been an excellent accomplishment for Bermuda as well as for the Helix team because we've, we've really worked hard to validate these tests and we've done a lot of work on the analysis of the tests and the different assays that we have to use. So it's um, been an amazing journey and a lot of hard work to get the samples 24, 48 hours reported and out of here on, onto Department of Health. We were asked by Department of Health to look into testing um, at a probably about a week before we actually did testing. And we were able to make contact with our international uh, uh, colleagues, uh, PAHO and Public Health England, we have colleagues in, um, that also do molecular testing that we keep in contact with anyway in the Cayman Islands. And we were able to source uh, kits very quickly to get us up and running from PAHO. And the virologist from PAHO came on board to make sure that everything was to the standard. And we were already accredited and already had the instrumentation and all the kits and supplies. So it was an easy thing for Helix to get going within a week's time to, to get these um, COVID samples processed. In relation to uh, anything that is detected for COVID, 
Uh, it is verified by Cochra, so those samples will go over to Cochra and they help to also assist us um, over there to be able to know what's positive um, or what's detected and what's not detected and we were able to move forward with the testing from there. When, once we received our initial positive sample, um, it was more through the verification with Dr. Escobar and his team at CARFRA, it was just good for Helix that we were able to be able to compare results and we use the same platform and the same kits and the same techniques and it was just more verification and validation that what we were doing, we were on the right path. The number of tests varies, depends on Department of Health. So we assist Department of Health by uh, they collect samples through their drive-throughs or through different areas in Bermuda through their strategies and then the, the samples are processed that way so we are not able to know what samples are, uh, how many samples they're going to have for the day until they actually arrived and um, King Edward also we do their samples and they get processed and we're not sure how many samples they would give us in a day so we only work to whatever is received at the time. So we have uh, about four staff members and everyone's role is different but we all work as a team. We have uh, analysts that prepare plates, um, we have extraction team, we have the limb system team, we have the clinical team um, and everyone's pretty much cross-trained in the different areas. Um, and then we look at the data at the end and um, everyone peer reviews and then the final review is with the PAHO virologist. The components you need to do the test are the nasal pharyngeal swab that the Department of Health, um, that's their part that they do. So the nasal pharyngeal swab is taken by the nurse um, to the patient that has the appointment and then we need the nasal pharyngeal swab which we're authorized to use on our instrument. We need primers and probes for our RNA kit. We also need pipettes and uh, lots of consumables that, are, um, that we use for the instruments. So currently Helix already had all the consumables for the process so it was an easy start for us here. The, the challenge was to make sure that we did all our validations and quality assurance because as an accredited laboratory we need to make sure those checks are in place. We also had to perform uh, proficiency testing for World Health Organization which were, was sent back to them for assessment. So we had a lot of checks in between uh, the last seven weeks that we've been uh, operational and um, it's been really a journey for the whole team and a lot of learning experiences as well. This week Helix is going to implement uh, antibody testing on our immunodiagnostic instrument. Uh, so we're working on this week some validations and verification checks with uh, the company that we're actually partnering with to, to do the antibody testing here. The, instead of saying benefits of antibody testing, I would say that antibody testing is a way that we would be able to see if there was any possible exposure within our community. And it assists communities um, in throughout the U.S. currently right now to be able to open up borders and get back to work and give people a little bit more confidence about uh, the, the spread within the community of COVID. So we never know if the antibodies are going to last in someone or not, so, but, but the test is an uh, emergency use authorized test and it will be running on our immunodiagnostic instruments.